Welcome to DOS Geek. I'm very excited to bring you some more results on the Ryzen 9 3900X. I have some fantastic benchmarks and real world performance video to share with you here. We're going to start off with thanks to Rocco from Big Daddy Linux. He has a absolute beautiful machine out there and I wanted to do some benchmarks against that machine to see how the AMD is competing against the Intel lineup here. So he has an Intel Core i9 9900K, a GeForce RTX 2080 video card. And I wanted to do some tests that not just gaming, but actually for individuals workflow. And the great thing about Blender is it's a incredibly universally powerful tool. And you'll see this tool utilized and benchmarks run against it many times when CPU manufacturers or GPU manufacturers are out there trying to show the performance of the various hardware out there because it's extremely taxing on the system with some of these uh, visual tools that they've created in order to render. And it's also uh, very much something that people outside of gaming are interested in to increase the render times and increase and improve the performance of their machine during development cycles. So here are the results uh, individually. This is kind of the output that this Blender Benchmark tool provides currently. And you can see it, the lower the better because it's all based on the total render time or the time it took to render the various images here. There are six images that it attempts to render, professional images, barbershop interior, BMW 27, classroom, fishy cat, Coro, and pavilion Barcelona. And you can go check those out on Blender's website if you want to get an idea of what they look like. But here are the results. So the i9-9900K here with the RTX 2080, you can see the results on the right for the Radeon 9 3900X and they are impressive way more impressive than I even thought they would be. And one of the issues with AMD, I talk a lot about how much of the good stuff is out there about AMD, but one of the biggest problems AMD has is their software side. Uh, they do incredible things for open source. They do incredible things uh, with their hardware innovations and moving forward, but their software is always behind. Their drivers that push this hardware that they have seem to constantly be in a state of it takes one to two months later after release before you start seeing the true potential of the AMD hardware. So it's great to see in this initial release some of these results, but we're still dealing with the issue of System D in Linux where many distros are not booting. Pop OS has gone in and fixed this issue and some other distros have as well. Um, but for the most part, if you're wanting to run distros out there, the latest distro, and it utilizes system D, you're still going to face that no boot issue. AMD released a week ago that they have fixed the issue in a BIOS that they've released to the manufacturers or a flash code. And that has not yet hit the manufacturer's websites for MSI. And others have told me ASRock and others don't have it as well yet. So obviously it's going to take them some time to do testing and things. So uh, the, the area AMD is weakest in is really on the software side. I think there are uh, opportunities for distributions and AMD to work more closely together to fix this. I also think AMD needs to consider releasing their drivers and other formats outside of the kernel implementation that they do. However, we're going to be facing similar issue, although Intel tends to do much better uh, on the software side when Intel releases their new GPU lineup, which likely those drivers will go directly into the OS kernel as well, uh, because that's just what they tend to do. And we're going to be kind of figuring, trying to figure out within Linux, how do we handle this when uh, a lot of distros are not rolling and can take, you know, release cycles that are six months to a year. So in any case, that's the downside. But you can see in these results, I was absolutely floored, especially when you look at this barbershop interior. The difference here is not just um, minimal. It is a huge difference in the render times from 1,059 to 685. Now, in some of the other tests, the difference isn't so vast. Uh, but you can see across the board in all six tests, the Ryzen 9 3900X dominates as I hoped it would. It is indeed 12 cores and 24 threads versus eight cores and 16 threads. And AMD has done something truly amazing, but I expect these results to even get better 
as the software starts to catch up because I'm on Pop! OS. Rocco is also on Pop! OS as well. Um, but as you know, the new drivers come into the later kernel versions and the new message drivers come out as well, you're probably going to see improvements across the board. This is using the Radeon 7, of course, versus the 2080 uh, RTX 2080 from NVIDIA. So again, just overall incredible performance, definitely showing the power that's being unlocked in the Radeon 7 with the PCIe 4.0 technology as well on the motherboard. So I was very pleased with this result. So now let's look at some gaming and then we're also going to show, uh, we're gonna use Unit Engine for some benchmarks. And I'm also gonna show some real world gaming so you can see the frames per second there. And hopefully all together, this will give you a good idea of how fantastic the performance is and how far along AMD has come with this latest iteration of CPU. All right, so next on my list was to take a look at unit engine results. Now, again, a lot of people are in this discussion with me right now in the Patreon Telegram group for this community. If you wanna join, that's an option. It's a smaller group of people for those who uh, donate either to an open source project, $20 or more. Uh, I'll send you an invite to that group or you can become a patron of the show and get invited to that kind of private telegram group. But one of the discussions that has been going on is the scientific state of benchmarks. Is it scientific? And the answer, in my opinion, is no. Uh, benchmarks tend to, first of all, there have been many situations, even recently, where companies have manipulated benchmarks so that they get the super high scores, but the end result was we found out they were freezing the CPU or doing something silly behind the scenes to uh, make their scores artificially higher than they should. Number two is there are so many factors that happen and this proves it perfectly here with this particular benchmark. So it's a guide, it's the best base that we kind of have, but I like to do a mixture of benchmarks and real world actual gaming and performance because games can be tailored towards certain hardware, they can be programmed in a certain way that is a benefit to one vendor over another. And so depending on the game, like a CSGO, which is more CPU based, it's gonna rely more heavily on the CPU that's in your machine versus the GPU. And there's just so many factors that can come in processes running behind the scenes. And you can see that here because while I have a fantastic build and I've paired high quality RAM with high quality motherboard, high quality CPU, high quality power supply, you can see that my machine with specs that really shouldn't be beating some of these machines out here, especially when they're paired with things like Titans and 2080 Ti's is in fact keeping up with them. And that just goes to show you um, that we're in the top 50 of all the results. Now I ran this in 1080p and the reason is they don't have a 2K option and all my machines are 2K. And that's another thing to keep in mind during this video is everything on this was done except for these benchmarks here, because I didn't run them live. All the video footage and things you're going to see for the most part, unless you see it switch to a phone, is being recorded in 2K at 60 frames per second while I'm playing the game, which is going to impact between 15 and 30 frames per second right there, having that OBS running in the background recording the session while I'm gaming. So that's something important to keep in mind when you see these results that they're actually much, much higher. And I'll try to throw in some screenshots that I've taken to kind of prove that case out. But the point is there are a lot of factors that can happen behind the scenes that can make a machine look better or worse. And that's not because I'm pro AMD or pro Intel. That's a fact across the board. So take this for what it's worth. What you can see here is that all the people who've run this latest benchmark from unit engine out there, the superposition benchmark, this is their latest one we are in the top 50 in the world. And this is competing. We have no idea if these individuals are, you know, putting baby oil in their case or freezing their CPUs or uh, have fancy water cooler setups or what they have. But I think you can also see that a lot of these machines that should be stomping my computer that aren't are likely the result of pairing poor hardware and other choices outside of the CPU and GPU, which can impact performance heavily. So they'll spend all the money on the CPU and cheap out on the RAM, have RAM with terrible timing or just you know cheap amount of it. Um, or they will have motherboards that are very cheap or hard drives that are old and cheap and not fast. So there are many factors that come in here. Now it's important to remember as well that my machine's not overclocked. 
So it is very much in the state of what you would get right out of the box without doing any special tweaking to it at all. So with that being said, we got a 10,581 points here. So that puts us somewhere between these two machines here. The one is an i9-9900K with the 2080 Ti, and the one above it is an i7-8700K. So interesting, because you would think these two may be reversed, and later up you can see some i9-9900Ks that are doing slightly better. Again, all of these scores are within range here, but we are in the top 50 of every computer benchmarked using this tool. And I think that is a pretty astounding accomplishment considering, again, we know the Radeon 7 GPU is not as fast as a 2080 Ti, especially when it comes to gaming and frames per second and those type of things. Although with that HBM memory, it tends to be an absolute beast when it comes to rendering and workloads. So that gives it an advantage in one area, gives it a disadvantage in another, and ultimately we fall right at the top of the pack here. Top 100, top 50 even, and that's a pretty awesome place to be. So now let's go take a look at some actual gaming and some gaming benchmarks to kind of round all of this out and you can see the performance that we have today. But I guarantee you if I do this in a couple months, the results are gonna be even better as AMD software finally catches up with AMD's hardware. Let's take a look at some of the other benchmarks. All right, so here we have a crowd favorite CSGO, heavily relies on the CPU. We have this on high settings, and of course we're recording with OBS at the same time in 2K. Now I'm terrible at this game, leave your judgment below but you can see some really impressive results, I think, uh, from the frames per second here. Obviously, you're going to have a fantastic experience at over 200 frames per second. Um, I did set OBS to not have a buffer here, so you'll see in some of the gameplay some stuttering um, at times or frames being skipped, and that's just a result of running games on their highest settings and trying to record in OBS at the same time. Um, the actual gameplay in all of these games is extremely ordinarily smooth this is the new game from valve dota underlords it's also available on mobile as well it's really really fun game not super graphically intensive though um, but obviously we're pulling out some great results here now some of the games i'm going to show are steam proton games which means they were never made to run in linux at all they're they are basically steam's uh, play and proton using wine and a bunch of incredible coding have made these games compatible with Linux. So thanks to everything Valve has done there. Uh, but keep that in mind uh, as well, that games uh, are not native to Linux are obviously not going to get uh, the performance you would get on their native platform. Here we're playing Dying Light, uh, just showing some different uh, frame rates we get here in a open scene, which can heavily impact the frames per second especially when you have the viewing distance set up on high or ultra settings here um, because you have a very at top of a building very high viewing distance that's expected in the background and that's going to impact performance heavily versus being in a closed room uh, which is the quickest way if i just want to show you oh my gosh three four hundred frames per second is to go into a closed room uh, because there's no viewing distance for the GPU to draw, you're going to get much better results. But I wanted this because I think it's more fair representation uh, for this game here. Very, very fun game, by the way. Check out. Next up, we're playing some Mad Max here. Now this one did not get the results that I was hoping for in Mad Max. It's a pretty hefty game, um, but in certain cases here, you can see depending on the drawing distance, again, we're in an open environment. Uh, we're well over the 60 frames per second we would be hoping for in 2K. We're well into the 100 frames per second, but there are times you can see as we get closer to an enemy base here where the frames start to drop off but then quickly recover so this game to me tells me more of an optimization issue with the game uh, than gpu performance but it's still able to deliver some great results
Now, one of my favorite games this year, Near Automata, I think that's how you pronounce it. Just an absolute fun RPG, Final Fantasy-like game here. Uh, but this game is known to be capped at 60 frames per second. They actually capped it at 60 frames per second on purpose, and you can't remove it, even if you get rid of V-Sync and other things. So uh, there is a, apparently like a mod that's available out there for Windows machines to fix that, but I only showed a little bit of footage because all you're gonna see is 60 frames per second because that's where it's capped at. This is part of the Warhammer series here. I have no idea how to play this game, but I saw it in my catalog and threw it in there um, just to show you some of its results as well. Curse my skin. Next up, a very awesome game, Borderlands, the prequel here. It's in outer space. You can see some kind of strange floating and a little slowness to the movement. That's because of the environment here. But you can see we're getting fantastic frames per second with this coming in well over into the uh, over 150 and into close to 200 frames per second at times in this game. So very good results overall just showing how awesome this AMD setup is, how far along Linux has come in gaming with so many games out there available for it now, thanks to Steam Proton and Steam Play and individuals and studios like Feral out there who are porting games over to Linux and doing a fantastic job of it. So very thankful for the work from the community and others. So that's my video, I hope you've enjoyed it. Until next time, get out there and fill your brain. Just, 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 just.